my older sister turned 18. This was exciting news because to the world, she was now officially considered an adult. She now enjoys the privileges of voting, she no longer has a legal curfew, and she can enlist in the military without my parents' consent. But I don't think she will. But to our family and the people around her who knew her well, she was considered an adult long before she turned 18. My parents started the process of treating her like an adult when she was 13, and they've done the same with me. I've discovered this attitude towards teenagers in our culture is uncommon. Rather than challenging young people to become adults, our culture has encouraged them to remain children until they turn 18, when they're somehow supposed to magically start acting like an adult. However, age doesn't define when one becomes an adult. Character does. In this speech, we'll first contrast the definition of an adult with the history of adolescence in America. Then, show how our culture has been pampering teens as children. And lastly, we'll discover how we can unlock the potential in youth. So, what is an adult anyway? Technically, it means fully developed and mature. Now, it's true that young people are physically less mature than adults, but that does not mean they are capable of exhibiting adult-like behavior. Robert Epstein, Ph.D., who wrote Teen 2.0, writes, Adults are supposed to know about leadership and to some extent to be able to act as leaders. Adults are supposed to be able to solve a wide variety of problems. Adults are supposed to know the difference between sex and love. Adults are supposed to be able to accept blame for their wrongdoing. Adults are supposed to know how to converse with, show respect for, forgive, apologize to, get along with, and assist other people. So no matter what your age, if you were able to accomplish these things, you should be considered an adult. However, our culture tends to assume that teenagers are not only physically less mature than adults, but in character also. Teenagers have a bad reputation for being rebellious and unruly and are expected to exhibit adolescent behavior. But adolescence as we know it today is a fairly recent phenomenon in human history. According to Dr. Robert Epstein, a distinguished researcher, for most of human history until the time of the Industrial Revolution, the vast majority of our children worked alongside adults as soon as they were able and transitioned to partial or full adulthood by their early, mid, or late teens. In fact, the apprentice system that had been put in place for centuries allowed young people to be mentored by adults, which helped them transition smoothly from childhood to adulthood. But then came the industrial era. During this time, several factors came together to begin the mindset that adolescence was a separate stage of life. Labor laws were put in place to protect the millions of young people working long hours in the factories. Simultaneously, labor unions formed and worked to protect the jobs and wages of older people by pushing younger people out of the workforce. Then came the invention of mass education, which then forced younger people out of the workforce and into schools. In schools, they were surrounded by peers, not adults. To top it all off, entertainment came into play. Beginning in the late 19th century, the rise of youth-oriented industries began, and this further widened the gulf between young people and adults. For example, the Parker Brothers, a board game company that invented Monopoly, Clue, and Risk, was founded in 1884 by George Parker. The youth markets grew tremendously in the 1880s and 90s. Youth-oriented corporate empires such as Disney, Hasbro, and Fisher-Price all got their start in the early 1900s. To flash forward to right now, adolescence has become a separate stage of life. It is now shown in today's society, in today's society the teen culture is an extremely lucrative business. It is now shown that teens spend $190 billion a year on music, clothes, and gadgets developed for their use. If a teen were allowed to function as an adult, businesses would suffer. Unfortunately, businesses aren't the only ones guilty of pampering young children. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, a German writer, once said, too many parents make life hard for their child by trying too zealously to make it easy for them. One reason that a parent might consistently want to help their child is because they don't want to see him or her fail and get hurt. Hera Marano, a writer for New York Times and editor for Psychology Today wrote, a child who never experiences failure will view anything less than a total success as a failure. Allow your kids to mess up. Failure teaches kids what doesn't work, end quote. In a sense, failure is 
to learn you. I know from experience that failure is no fun, but it is an excellent teacher. This past year, I took a written test. To get, I had to take a written test for my driver's permit. With all my peers telling me it was an extremely easy test, I went in with minimal studying and felt rather confident. Coming out of the DMV, that confidence was shattered, and I had to go telling all my friends that I had failed the extremely easy test. I had a week before I could take the test again. In the span of that week, I read the entire 80-page California Driver's Handbook and took multiple practice tests. I did not want to fail this test again. And I didn't. I came out of the DMV with a smile on my face, a permit in hand, and a lesson responsibility. We will fail. But teenagers have a great potential to become mature, hardworking adults. Parents may wonder, how do I know my child will go far and be responsible? By simply giving them the chance. This is the key to unlocking the potential in the youth. Epstein reports that research on resilience shows that exposure to great challenges may be essential for making young people as strong as adults. For, consider, for example, David G. Farragut, who entered the U.S. Navy at age nine. Because David had repeatedly proven his ability to be responsible and demonstrated great skill, the Navy trusted him with more and more until he was given his first ship to command at age 12. David later became commander-in-chief of the Navy during the Civil War. To think that a 12-year-old was given a challenge to command a ship, stepped up to that challenge, and accomplished that challenge is remarkable. Now, if you may be thinking there's no way modern-day youth can do something like this, consider 17-year-old Zach Sunderland from California. Zach purchased a 36-foot sailboat with his own money, $6,000, and retrofitted it with his father. In 2008, Zach circumnavigated the globe, a 28,000 mile trip, 13 months alone. Imagine being on a boat and having to determine when to eat, when to sleep, when to bathe, how to navigate, and dealing with occasional storms all when you're 17. Zach had to dedicate his early life to prepare himself to be responsible enough. If these people can do it, I think my generation can achieve even more if given the opportunity. Now, for some of us, it isn't really realistic to travel around the world alone, but we shall at least be challenged to go merely beyond babysitting and staying behind a counter at a fast food place. Personally, I find pride being put in a position of responsibility. This summer, I'll be facing my biggest challenge yet. My parents have been gradually preparing me for the time they will leave me in charge of my two younger siblings, who are 11 and 13, as they travel overseas with my oldest sister for two weeks. I'll have a grocery budget, we'll be in charge of cooking, cleaning, and playing peacekeeper in the house. If there's something that I don't know how to handle, I'll have a few families as a safety net for me. I may not travel around the world alone, but this is one of many opportunities for me to grow and mature as a young adult. Historically, there were many opportunities for young people to grow and mature as young adults, because they were respected as young adults. In fact, Adolescence wasn't a concept, and teenager wasn't even a word until the late 1900s. As time went on, America has created a culture that restricts the potential in youth. Nowadays, teenagers need the freedom to make mistakes, because this expands the possibility for them to become mature, hardworking adults. Teenagers are greatly underestimated. They are capable of exhibiting adult-like behavior. To lead, solve problems, manage their behavior, and assist other people. They just need given a chance.